My name is Rihanna Dillon and we are coming live from London. Today, I am joined by actors Aaron Pierre and Stephen Donnelly. Hey. They are currently playing at The Globe in Othello. So if you have any questions for either of them, either tweet us at Build Series LDN or pop a comment in the Facebook box below where you're watching right now. So guys, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your characters. Stefan, let's start with you. So you play Rodrigo in Othello. That's right. Uh, Rodrigo is a romantic. And in our, in our play, he's a bit of a new romantic. He's got a bit of a sort of adamant uh, guy liner on <laughs> and a big old puffer jacket. And he's madly in love with Desdemona uh, and ultimately gets totally tricked by Iago, played by Mark Rylance. And I never get the girl. <laughs> oh, oh. And Cassio. Yeah, so is Cassio is, um, you know, Othello's right hand man, essentially, um, the lieutenant to Othello. Um, you know, without being biased, I think he's quite an honorable character. You know, he's straight down the line, very committed and dedicated to his work. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he, he unfortunately gets, you know, again, completely, completely, you know, finessed by Iago and ends up in a, in a very dangerous position and um, ultimately a very sad ending, really. The dastardly Iago, mm. played by Mark Rylance. Yeah. I mean, that must have been quite a phenomenal thing when you found out you are going to be working with him. Yeah, oh my God, that was, you know, just a, a dream come true, really. Um, I remember seeing Mark for the first time in uh, Twelfth Night mm -hmm. in 2012, um, where he played, played Lady Olivia. And that was just, you know, that was an absolutely incredible performance. Um, so to have the opportunity to, you know, uh, not only be, you know, working alongside him on the Globe stage, but also to witness, um, you know, what he did in rehearsals, you know, watching him work things out, watching him decipher the text um, was really a masterclass. Um, and I'm very, very grateful that I've had that experience. And before starting, you know, I, I must admit, I was sort of terrified of working with it because, you know, he's such a hero. And everyone's got one of those stories, haven't they, when they've seen Mark either at the Globe or in a film or, or you know, in Jezbus or West Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, but like Aaron says, he's been so open with his process. Um, I have, all my scenes are with Mark. Yeah. And he, he has taught me a lot. And, of course, he's also... He was the founding artistic director of the Globe. Mm -hmm. So he knows that space inside out. And he's got all these stories about how it was set up, what, you know, what the mission statement of that place is. So all of that like, stuff has been fascinating as well. So, I mean, Aaron, you, that was your first time at the Globe working on Othello. Yeah. Um, so how did working with Mark Rylance, who, like you said, was so influential in that space, mm. how did that sort of add to your experience? Uh, like I said, every single night when I you know, step out on that stage. Um, and also, like I said, the, the rehearsal process prior to that as well, it's all just been a dream come true. Every night is a dream because, you know, not only has it, you know, been something that I've always wanted to do to work on the Globe stage, but in addition to that, I'm working on a play which I just absolutely, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> working on Sulky. a- Yeah, working on a, a play like Othello mm -hmm. is just, you know, it's an absolute dream as well because I feel like that play, um, is, is, is such a rich play and it has so many layers and, and, and such a, a social commentary um, that I think it's, it's such a brilliant play to be a part of. And then, you know, just to, you know, the cherry on, on the cake is, you know, just working with, you know, Mark and, and, and such a talented and wonderful cast. All of my colleagues I learn every single day from, mm -hmm. you know, um, keep your eyes and ears open and just, I just absorb from these guys. They're, they're incredibly talented and it's, yeah, I'm very fortunate to be working with them. Stefan, you have actually worked at the Globe before. How does it compare with other theatres? You know, oh my god, that jacket! By the way, I'm <laughs> obsessed with that jacket. It's it's great, isn't it? Jonathan Where is that Benson from? <laughs> designed it. He made it out of some material that he got from America. He went on on a on a trip to America to find all these amazing fabrics. It is fabulous. Um, yeah, and actually, <laughs> it's been a bit sweaty when it's been really hot. But now we're coming into autumn. It's okay, perfect. Fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. It's more of an autumn winter jacket. Um, well, you rock it. Um, <laughs> so sorry. So going back to um, how does the Globe compare to other theatres? I mean, there is something just that much more magical about performing Shakespeare in. Shakespeare's own home turf, isn't there? Yeah, it's as close 
uh, as as we th we think it would have been, it would have looked like. Um, and there's certainly something about the atmosphere of the audience. Mm -hmm. You've got 700 people standing, and they're so hooked to the story, and they're so vocal. You know, they'll they'll laugh, they'll kiss their teeth, they'll tut, they'll sometimes shout out, um, they'll comment on the play. So there's something really <laughs> live. What do about they say it. when they're commenting? <laughs> sometimes when I'm dead, I'm lying down, so I've got quite a good moment to listen out, and they they say stuff about Yago, like I can't believe he's just done that. You know. <laughs> So yeah. hear them talk Sometimes to each other. Also, because there's, there's a, a scene towards the end, without giving it away, I mean, where Steph's on the other side of the stage and I'm on the other corner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Steph is hearing these sort of things and I'm hearing sometimes in the corner of my ear, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> God, it's <laughs> right. I'm trying. It's like you're doing such a good job that they, they forget you're acting, clearly. <laughs> um, and you're working also alongside Andre Holland, who, of course, um, starred in the Oscar-winning Moonlight, and he is phenomenal as Othello. Incredible. Working Incredible. With, with people who are, you know, doing incredibly well in the film game as well, how does that sort of up your game as actors, as a group? I think it does massively. Like Aaron was saying, we learn from everyone, really, playing all sorts of different characters. And, and there are a lot of da the two dancers in the, in the play yeah, as well. Oh, my God, the dancers are unexpected, yeah. but really beautiful. Exactly. And, but they've also helped us a lot with the movement, as well as the choreographer, Antonio Franceschi. Um, so we've learned a lot. And Andre has, is, is such a brilliant, beautiful actor. I think he brings so much intelligence, warmth, um, grace, and, and huge pathos to mm -hmm. Othello. Um, so watching him... Yeah, work his way through what is a very difficult part, I think, mm. uh, has has been remarkable mm -hmm. to watch. And I'm moved, at, you know, once when I'm off, not in, in some of the scenes, I'm still watching it on the screen. You know, we've got a tannoy and, and it's still quite gripping. We're halfway through, but I'm still finding what he does mm -hmm. and what everyone does in the cast, including yourself, you know, really, really great. Yeah. And there's you do a and jig as well. We do, yeah. Which I love. I just... <laughs> I mean, spoiler, you know, Othello is a tragedy. So yeah. then seeing you guys at the end kind of all get up and do this fabulous... I loved... I mean, and the drunken scenes between you guys as well. Um, that, must been a, that must be quite entertaining to play. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I think what, what's so nice is that uh, the cast genuinely... Ha it, there's genuinely a, a family atmosphere... Mm -hmm. Um, amongst us. So when we, you know, have those scenes in the tavern where everybody is, you know, sort of really feeling liberated and, and free and, you know, drinking freely, um, and we have to dance and we have to jump and shout, that's genuinely us just connecting on a level of let's just throw everything up in the air and, and, and just have a great time. What's an Othello sort of cast and crew night out like? I mean, I have to admit, we're actually relatively sensible. Oh, that's not what we For the most part, we're relatively <laughs> sensible, you know. But, um, you know, we, we do like to spend some time and we do like to have a drink now and again. Yeah, we had a good night during rehearsals, which was sort of work, but sort of not where we stayed over. We had yeah. a sleepover. Yeah, had a yeah sleepover. we slept right. on that's the adorable. stage. That was yeah. adorable, yeah. All of it, we just had some drinks, we had some food. We played yeah. volleyball in the yard where the audience stands. Oh, really? Yeah, we put up a net. <laughs> Actually, we do that before every show as a warmer. We do, yeah. We, yeah. yeah, so we play. You play volleyball? Yeah. yeah. Just, a, just really... as a sort of like a team building exercise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just, sorry, just to go back to your question as well, just regarding Andre, mm -hmm. it's been, you know, it's been absolutely incredible, you know, to work with him and, and just the, like, like Steph said, the grace that he brings to that role, the intelligence yeah. and uh, the dignity he brings to that role is awe-inspiring. And, and Othello is such a, you know, a tragic character at points and really requires, you know, from the actor, so much depth. Mm -hmm. and, and he brings that every single night without fail. And for that, you have to give the most utmost respect and, and um, admiration for that. Um, He's a very dear friend of mine, and um, he's doing a fantastic job. He was quite... I read that he actually wasn't... Didn't immediately want to play Othello. Like, he kind of avoided that role for quite a long time. So it does feel really quite special that he has so completely made this his own. Absolutely. And has made a... He has kind of forged a new Othello, I think, for our time. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think it's something that everyone should see. Yeah, I think you're right. Um... I do always ask this, but costumes-wise, what is like the one thing that you put on and you're like, yes, now I'm Cassio, now I'm Rodrigo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not too sure. I think I quite like, I quite like my, my, my trousers. They sort of mm -hmm. like end, 
you know, sort of three quarters down my leg. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I just like just the kind of old school, high waisted, yeah. high waisted trousers. That kind of makes me feel like I'm in the zone. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me, the most important thing for my character, weirdly, is my shoes. Yeah. You know, I, I sort of feel like if, you know, if I don't have the right shoes, then I feel like I'm not sort of really engaging with the character, which is a weird thing. I'm mm -hmm. sure not many people really feel that. But for me, that makes me feel earth. That makes me feel grounded and, um, and rooted in order to be playful and have a good mm -hmm. time. For me, it's probably, I've, I've always wanted to have my ears pierced <laughs> and I never have. So I've got like a clip on earring. So, but I think that's just me. I just like it. But for Rodrigo, it's probably the jacket. And all the gold, he's got loads of gold. He has a lot of really gold. Wealthy. He's like, yeah. he's almost like quite hipster. He's probably like the most modern character. Yeah. I think this scarf thing's quite cool as well. This little silk scarf thing. He's it is an incredible outfit. And also yeah. I love Mark Ryan's sly little <laughs> face just at the back there. Yeah. <laughs> he's so fab. Plotting. Um, what, do you have like a sort of pre-show routine? So you have your volleyball. Do you have like superstitions that you have to do? Do superstitions still exist within actors? Is that like a sort of... Does that still happen? I mean, well, for, in terms of what the company do, you know, we sort of, you know, every, every you know, afternoon, if it's a matinee or late e mm -hmm. early evening before an evening show, we do, you know, a 45-minute warm-up um, as, as a company. And then we go on to play volleyball or something, you know, just to kind of get the company energy going. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody sort of goes and, and, and does their, their own respective thing. I think for me... Um, something that I sort of have to do is, is listen to a certain playlist. Um, I have certain artists that I have to listen to and they just sort of, I think they calm me. Um, nerves is something that I, you know, I always have and mm -hmm. I, I think I always will. And I've sort of learned to, as opposed to, you know, trying to uh, rid myself of them, um, the way I find that they don't prohibit me is if I find a way to channel them mm -hmm. and, and, you know, certain artists that I listen to, you know, before going on like, you know, Sam Cooke or Ella Fitzgerald, um, J. Cole, I listen to as well. They sort of just calm me and allow me to find a way to channel those nerves um, in a way that won't, you know, sort mm -hmm. of just make it make me feel jittery. I can imagine yeah. Ella Fitzgerald is incredibly grounded. Oh, she's just queen. Isn't she? She's just queen, yeah. <laughs> Stefan? Uh, I, um, I quite like going out and, and, and seeing the river, actually. Yeah. Right near, cause I'm from Wales originally, and, and like, water really calms me. Mm -hmm. So, like, the river is sort of my, my Ella, um, in a way, uh, for this show. And, yeah, and I, I read some poetry as well. <laughs> what do yeah. you read? Um, bec I read... Why I are you laughing? That's a good... <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> it's so so romantic but like i said rodrigo's quite romantic you know yes, with a capital r fits. um so i read some um some walter raleigh and stuff so from that time as oh, well oh wow which be quite useful gosh you're like, immersive yeah. well mm, yeah it's good i like yeah. it yeah it's and it's all like romantic poetry you know with all that imagery so it's mm -hmm. quite it's quite a sweet thing for rodrigo to have in his mind i think like really romantic images yeah <laughs> We have a question um, in on Twitter um, who asks, do you have a favourite Shakespeare character or play? And that's from Matt. Ooh. I mean, there are just so many. I, I quite like Malvolio, yeah. Twelfth Night, because the play is so cruel, like, uh -huh. the way they treat him and make him dress up in yellow stockings. The, yeah, the, the mustard stockings are just yeah. like the highlight of Twelfth Night. And then he says, that, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah really even better than the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and he says at the end, I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. And it's really sort of, um, yeah, scary, that, mm -hmm. I think, if it's played properly. So, I re yeah, I like Malvolio. Yeah. I think my favourite Shakespeare character would have to be Mercutio. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just feel like he's just got so much depth as a character mm -hmm. and so many layers. And he's also just so poetic in the way he speaks. And it's, it's not in a sort of forced way. It's really effortless. Mm -hmm. You know, the way he comes up and devises these sentences and then just says them as if he's, you know, making general conversation. Um, yeah, I feel like he's, he's the most fascinating character for me. We lose him far too early. Far too <laughs> early. Yeah, 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 yeah. I played Mercutio in the Globe two years ago. Did and you? it's brilliant because then you have Did, all yeah. the second half off. <laughs> 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 it's really great. You just come on for the bow and the jig. <laughs> what do you do for that second half when you're literally like, oh, well, now I just have to go on and bow and then that's it? Read poetry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's amazing that, again, in that space, playing Makusha there, you know, those 700 people are really with you, with all those crazy, 
crazy images that are in that yeah. Queen Mab speech. Uh-huh. Stuff, you know, you that can really speech play is something it. else. Crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, just geeking out here. I, know, I love it. Yeah. A bit, yeah. Um, and you were talking about Mark Rylance um, playing Lady Olivia, um, and he d- he d- he's done a, a several all male. Shakespeare's, I think, doesn't he? Productions. Um, if you were going to play a female Shakespeare character in an all-male production, who would it be? Lady Macbeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think I'll ever get cast with Lady Macbeth. <laughs> you must. I'm like six, don't say six foot short, three. Aaron. I, just, I just don't think it's really going to happen. But I mean, if, if that opportunity ever posed itself, Lady mm-hmm. Macbeth... Um, that, that she has a scene where she's trying to wipe the blood off her hands and it's just, you know, it's sort of a stain that can't be removed. Mm. Just some of those scenes, you know, it just, I, I just love to really explore that character if I, if I was ever given the opportunity, yeah. Wicked character. It's an amazing one. I'd like to play Cleopatra, I think. Oh. Anthony and Cleopatra. You just yeah. love the eyeliner. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and Stefan, you write and you adapt plays as well as act in them. Um, so what would be your dream adaptation and who would you get to star in it? Oh, um, oh, I'm not <laughs> sure. Maybe, um, oh, we've been talking about that amazing Barry Jenkins new movie. That's yes. Out. Only Beale Street be- talk. Oh James Baldwin. Yeah, James, James Baldwin. Baldwin. Oh. His mm-hmm. stuff's amazing. But I, I don't know, I feel like I could never adapt those... Those things are so amazing. Like those kind of writers who I love, you know, and read a lot of. I don't know, um, but uh, the last thing I adapted was a, a, a series of short stories by Caradoc Evans, who's a, a Welsh writer, um, and that was quite a challenge because it's lots of mini bits. Yeah. But maybe something with Dylan Thomas, like using all his texts and stuff. Yeah. His life is fascinating, you know, a very sad life. Mm-hmm. Maybe something like that. And who would you get star in it? Aaron Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> As if we didn't see that coming. We've had another question in on Twitter. So Jade has asked, if you could play any historical character, a lot of what-ifs here, a lot of hypotheticals for you guys, who would it be and why? When you say historical, how, how, how far back do we mean? Historical. Just anybody that... Anybody who's existed that in has history. Existed. Yeah. Um, I'd love to have the opportunity to play Muhammad Ali. Um, I just, he's just, you know, such an inspiration for me. I've had a poster of him on my wall since I was, you know, this big, really, you know, since I was probably about, since was probably about six, I've had a poster, because I remember going to get the poster, um, and it had this long quote on it, which I didn't understand at the time, but it's been on my wall since, and it just says that, um, it, it essentially says, you know, champions aren't made in the gym, they're made of something deep within them, you know, a desire, a dream, a vision, and, uh, you know, they must have will and skill, but the will must be stronger than the skill. I just think, you know, some of the things he came out with, yeah. you know, he's just uh, a legend in every every sense of the word, yeah. Stefan, too many? Maybe Choose from? Uh, uh, Edward II. Oh. Yeah, there's a good play by Christopher Marlowe as well, so mm-hmm. I could actually play him in a play maybe. Yeah. Nice. Um, Stefan, you played a backbencher in Darkest Hour as well. Um, the atmosphere must have been incredible on set when Gary Oldman walks in as Winston Churchill. Yeah. Tell me about that. It was remarkable seeing him. I mean, he'd had something, I think it's three hours of prosthetics in the morning mm-hmm. and then four hours to take it all off in the evening. And when he walked on, it was, I kid you not, it was like seeing Churchill. And he had the cigar already lit and the specs. And and it was, he's so, I mean, he's he's amazing. Yeah. And he did this speech. It was, it was a very, very quick scene. And, but he, he had a big speech that he was trying to persuade all the MPs to support him. Um, And every single take was just marginally different. Um, Yeah, so watching him was brilliant just for those couple of days. Are you just constantly absorbing when you're with these other actors that you admire? Are you constantly sort of making notes on, I need to do that? Yeah, it's almost not making notes. It's like you're just, yeah, absorbing is a really good way. You can't help yourself but but be affected. And then particularly when you're acting with them, like Mark Mm -hmm. on stage, it's sort of, it it will be very different every night. I think Tom Hanks mentioned in, when they were doing Bridge of Spies together, that he will just do something very marginally different, like mm-hmm. be it a rhythm change or like use a slightly different word or something. And it just changes an entire scene. And so you can't help but be affected by that. And that's Absolutely, really useful, yeah. isn't it? You're it's live. constantly learning, especially when you're working with these giants. You know, it's just, 
you know, that I, f I find that, you know, even when, even when you're not anticipating learning something, you're learning something. Mm -hmm. And whether you've noticed you've learned it or not, it's definitely embedded in your psyche yeah. or your, you know, subconscious because, it, it, you know, you're in such a learning state when you're in also such a heightened state of, mm -hmm. of playing. So, yeah. Your teachers were right. That is how you learn. <laughs> um, so, Aaron, tell us about working on Krypton and being part of that sort of sci-fi family. Yeah, that's just, that's been a real honour. You know, that's been a really, really massive honour. Um, you know, I've always liked the, the genre of sci-fi from when I was really young. I think um, one of the most beautiful things about it is just that with that genre, we can comment on society uh, in, in a world that is otherworldly, you know. Um, and, you know, we're really fortunate uh, with Krypton to have, you know, a writer's room which is so aware and so... Uh, you know, in touch with what is currently happening in the world, um, and that finds its way into, you know, some of the scenes that we that we tell in the story. Um, yeah, it's been amazing every aspect of it. It's mm -hmm. been a lot of fun, and um, you know, I'm really really glad that it's been received in the way it has. And, Where uh, can people watch that? Uh, well, in the UK, you can watch it on E4, mm -hmm. um, and it's already aired in the states. Um, it was on Sci-Fi over there. Um, I think maybe in, on HBO in other parts of Europe. But I mean, it's been, yeah, it's been really amazing. And um, yeah, I can't wait for season two. Yeah. Um, Stefan, what have you got going on post Othello? A play that I've written is going on tour. Amazing, um, it's congratulations. Going to, to India, yeah, which is gonna be really Oh wow, really cool. like yeah. properly on tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then possibly Japan as well. So that, oh my yeah. goodness. So that'll be nice. Um, and then uh, I've got a couple of other bits coming up and then mm. the, I've got a, a small scene Bohemian Rhapsody which is the new Queen biopic oh cool yeah and that's coming out soon listen everyone's excited about that clearly. yeah I think tell, can you tell great. us anything about this yeah I mean it's 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 a, an amazing story that they've been trying to get off the ground for so long you know the, the Queen um, band have been trying to make it for a very long period of time so it's such I think a relief now to finally it's going to be out there um, and it's going to be an amazing story and Rami Malek who plays yeah. Freddie is, is remarkable in it yeah I mean he looks Exactly. Yeah, like him. It's he really incredible. and his movements and everything. And my dear friend Polly does all the choreography on it, um, and she, yeah, she's like, she, I think she, she and him have worked together brilliantly to make those moves and the dancing and all of that seems so real. Can we? Can you tell us what scene to look out for you in? No. You're oh. <laughs> I was trying to get a little spoiler there, and you noticed. Um, I'm really sorry, but that is all we have time for today. You've got until the 13th of October, I think, to book tickets for Othello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so please make sure you go and book them. Trust me, it is completely worth it. Let's give it up for Aaron and Stefan.